Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today we're going to talk about sword scabbards and how you wear them. So I've got the fabulous uh, Hob here, who's going to be modelling our swords. I'm going to go through the different types, sort of, not all of them, but main principle types, and just show you how they're put on, how they're worn, and why they're like that. So I'm talking about these sword scabbards in no particular date order. But we're starting here with a, a Bruegel messer. So Bruegel was an artist from the uh, early to mid 16th century. It did fantastic portraits and pictures of, of people, um, real people depicted in real life. And it, sort of very thuggy type guys tended to wear short messers like this. So Hob, could you pop that on? Now, you see them both worn as a baldric like this uh, and also belted. I'll show you a belted version in a moment. Now, this is obviously very free to move. That can be a bit of an issue. It's a personal choice thing, so some people would always put a belt over the top of that, and if it's belted over the top of the baldric strap, you're carrying the weight on your shoulder, but basically it's not free to dangle about. Next one up is a, another Bruegel-inspired messer from the sort of guys who were wearing them. Very rough and ready, suits hob perfectly. This one has been set up differently, so it's got a belt that just loops around the scabbard, going through a slit front and back. This has the advantage or the disadvantage, depending on personal choice, that it is much more secure along the leg now. It doesn't swing about so much as, as going over the shoulder, but again, you're now carrying all the weight on your hips. It's personal preference. Next up is a, a Messer, so a, a German big knife. It's really a short sword. This one has been put onto a split belt here, so it'll hang at a slight angle. Now again, if you belt this tight, it's really quite secure onto the hips there, and it doesn't really swing about too much. So it's, a, it's an effective scabbard type. Similar kind of setup was seen in the 14th century for single-handed swords, riding swords. Here we've got a late 13th and early 14th century uh, integrated sword scabbard, so the belt is actually woven into the scabbard. And this one is with a buckle. There we are. Again, because it's got the split belt, it hangs at an angle, it naturally does that. And you, you pull it relatively tight, but it sits down a little bit like the sort of the gunslinger look, that the belt can swing down a little bit from higher on the right hip to lower on the left. And that keeps it fairly secure. And again, it will wobble a bit, but it's actually relatively secure. Thank you, Hob. Here we've got a, a 12th and 13th century style scabbard. Again, it's integrated, slightly different style, but you've got a split belt, which is then woven into the actual scabbard covering, and that's what secures it in place. This one has no buckle. It's an earlier version, and the system is tied. So we'll show you how to do the knot. So we're threading the two parts of the tail, the top one through the top slot, the bottom tail through the bottom slot. That's then pulled tight. The top tail is formed into a loop and the bottom one threads around it, passes through itself and is just pulled tight and then just pull the main parts of the belt left and right and it pulls the whole thing tight. And it's really very secure. So you can jump up and down in that. There's no problem with it even though it looks like quite, quite a flimsy fixing. Here we have a 15th century sword scabbard, which is lashed, it's tied, the belting is tied to the scabbard itself, which actually makes it quite adjustable. So it is useful, um, as well as being a relatively cheaper way than using fittings. Now this is a three point suspension, which is very handy on longer swords. Basically, it has a, a fitting which is towards the small of the back, um, either over it or just over your left buttock. But what it means is that the, the straps that are on the top of the scabbard hang down here, and then the front one comes across and it pins the whole thing down to your side. So it makes it really quite secure. It stops it flapping around. I'm not sure I'd want to go running in it particularly, but when you're walking, as you saw earlier, it stops the sword swinging all over the place. Here we have a late 15th century longsword. You may have seen a video or two I've done on it before. This one has got a belt and a suspension system which are separate. So if you pop that on. Now that's very useful because it means you can still wear your flashy, nice, expensive, showy belt, basically, and take your sword off. And that still tells everybody that you're the kind of dude who carries a sword. So it's that sort of unspoken thing that's quite useful. 
So this is just hooked on at the back. I'm doing it for ease, but Hob can do it himself easy enough. So Hob just puts the main belt on, just as you would any other belt. So it's tightened up, he pops the pin through, and that leaves a long tail. That tail here goes through the last remaining buckle on the underneath of the scabbard. The pin goes in place, and then the, the tail that's left over is just turned over and tucked through in that very medieval way you see. You can walk with it and it doesn't sway around very much. Last up, I'm gonna show you a rapier scabbard. So again, this system has a separate belt. Again, it's handy. If you own a rapier, you've got money. You want people to know that, even if you're not wearing the sword itself. So I'll just clip this on because Hobbs not really used to it, but we've got a carrier at the back. That goes on and then turn around Hob. And then we have another point just here. So that instead of having a strap that goes over the back, over your ass, We've now got one that comes over the front. Again, it's a very secure system. Um, if you just turn to show the hanger, this here is very plain. It's quite a military type item, this one. If you've got the money, this is just perfect for embroidery, jewels, gems, carving, showing your money, showing your bling. Well, I hope that showed you a little bit more about different sword scabbards. It's quite a long time period from about really about 1150 through to about 1600. But what I've shown you here today covers most of the principal ways that scabbards were worn. Um, what I'd also like to say is thank you very much Kentwell Hall for letting us use a fantastic location. So thank you. <laughs>